really is about the risk assessment of the community uh, based on the numbers of cases that uh, are positive, mm -hmm. based on an investigation around each case to determine the source of the virus, where that person would have picked it up from, mm -hmm. where it is clearly a travel related case. And we don't have many of those these days because travel has been restricted. Then you track the links to that person and that's a little easier to do where it is not fully clear how that person picked up the virus then it poses greater challenges because it means that whoever gave them would be still at large and then their contacts become important where you have multiple cases of that happening mm -hmm. where you're picking up two three cases in a particular vicinity you're not so sure how they got it which means that it could be still spreading and the virus presents itself with a two week lag time. So whatever you get now, something else is happening there uh, prior to that. So once the team assesses and determines that you have in these multiple cases, uh, there is no absolute certainty around source. There are multiple contacts with the cases that you have looked at then it puts you in a position where you may need now to restrict movement. So you're basically saying to everybody, stop. Stay where you are, let us get a handle on it. Otherwise, it, it spreads more. With, with today's thing, sorry, it's a fever surveillance that we're doing. Because there are contacts from the community that are positive, then we want to make sure that they are, they are captured, those persons who might be having fever, or any other symptoms related to the COVID-19. Well, as you can see today, it's very tedious because you have to take the names of all the persons in the household, do our temperature checks for them, and to do home assessment as well. Just in case somebody in the household may become ill, you want to ensure that they have certain facility in place for them to be quarantined at home. So even though you've seen us just doing the temperatures here today, when we came last week, we had to do a home assessment. Having done all of this, you have to file a report. Yes. And that report is extensive. I've sat in the meetings in Kingston, Zoom meetings, where individual reports are focused on individuals who may be vulnerable or show symptoms. The case has to be discussed. Their home environment has to be discussed. Then they are determined on in terms of whether we take them out or ask them to be quarantined in a room, in their room. So the reporting mechanism after is equally tedious and takes a lot of time. The uh, first isolation area that we had basically was made and constructed for the grenade pull up area. Right. Right. But some of the force was inside of it in terms of the, the isolation, the proper techniques, getting made negative pressure and so on. So we basically decided that we just, just redesign it and basically try and make it into a proper isolation area where we can actually ventilate patients and so on inside here. So this this then is one of the part of the COVID response. This is a part of the COVID response. So how many COVID beds do you have here? We have ten COVID beds. Ten beds so far. That's ten of the one or seven beds. Right, one seventeen beds. One seventeen beds. And then this represents three three additional beds. And these are going to be the temperature pressure the, the control. Right. This is negative so pressure. These are the negative pressure and the, the more advanced. Right, right, right. Okay, so in total you'll have ten plus three, thirteen. Right. Right. And that for this size hospital, that's a good that's a good um, that's a good, good compliment. I am more concerned about deaths from COVID than people getting COVID. Because my view is that until enough of us get it, the population won't have the resistance to it in a general way. Um, young people get it, you don't get the symptoms. Alarica has 200 and, in the last month, just 220 of its employees who got COVID. The call centers are primarily young people, 20 and 30 little. 85% of them don't have any symptoms at all. We still have to lock them up because we don't want to go and spread to their grandmothers and mothers and so on. And in fact, the persons who have died from the COVID, Alarica link COVID, or the workplace cluster COVID, are persons who are a contact of an employee who is older and who has underlying conditions. So, you know, my view is that a lot of Jamaicans will get COVID. The, the modeling that we did suggests well over a million. 
What I want to do is to minimize the deaths, which is why the vulnerable populations, older people, people with underlying conditions, the hospital have to prepare to respond to that so that we can treat them. Tell me about some of the situations that you have encountered here in terms of the COVID. What has the experience been like for you? Um, well, so far, it has not been that bad. Mm -hmm. All the patients are stable, right. really stable. Mm -hmm. So we just stay the necessary precautions that we have in terms of our protective equipment, personal protective equipment, and maintaining our hygiene, mm -hmm. and doing the best that we can to care for the patients. We have to do the public education, so the, the public health nurses, and others who are in the field are supposed to take a brochure and hand out to everybody else so that they know exactly what is going on. But we also have the 888 One Love number. So to the extent that people come and ask you questions, just tell them to call 888 One Love and inquire if they have a concern. And somebody will answer the phone. We have a call center and, and, and discuss with them. If they, if they can't get that information from the people who are in the field, we have people in the field.